Spice, it's Mark Zickby, Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Zickby of Space Command. And um, yeah, I've been thinking, actually, in the last day or two about Joan Rivers, you know, and, uh, of course, because she uh, uh, certainly cut a wide swath and was a very memorable character. And, of course, I grew up with her on TV um, from when I was a kid. And I was thinking about her in relation, oddly enough, to science fiction, because what made her distinctive was that she spoke her mind and was very opinionated and um, and sometimes these would be um, audacious statements sometimes they'd be um, ones that you agreed with but they were always her um, her opinions she she didn't care what people thought of her in terms of um, telling her jokes saying her opinions being herself and in science fiction if you look at science fiction characters uh, many of the science fiction franchises have characters who are outspoken and don't care about what other people think about them or think of them, and uh, and often these are the best characters. So, I, so for instance, in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Rocket Raccoon uh, is the most opinionated character and is is the most fun character. In uh, Star Trek, it would be Doctor McCoy, always speaking his mind, uh, and every now and then Mr. Spock, who is the the one who's you know speaking the blunt truth, and uh, and it makes it usually makes a character very likable, even if you don't agree with their their statements or their opinions, you respect the fact that they have opinions. In Star Wars, of course, it's Yoda uh, and also Darth Vader. So, you know, which brings up another uh, interesting realization, which is that uh, one of the reasons that villains are often more interesting in science fiction films and, and films in general is because they're opinionated, they don't need to be liked, they have strong opinions, and they're often funny and interesting and smart. And of course, these were things that all uh, related to Joan Rivers. That she, uh, you know, she was of pretty much of a piece from when she began her career to when she uh, she uh, came to an end. And uh, so I think you know, and and when, when we look at our favorite characters in film and TV and books, you know, they're memorable because they're strong characters. They they have strong voices. And and for those of us creating uh, science fiction or creating fiction or even writing nonfiction. Uh, having opinions, stating your truth, being authentic, it all goes back to authenticity. And uh, so anyone who wants a career, or wants to brand themselves, you, you can't brand yourself by being bland. You can't brand yourself by being like everyone else. And uh, this is something that I realized a long time ago. And it relates to quality, of course, but quality can be different things to different people. Whereas if you say, okay, am I telling the truth? You know, Ray, Rod, Rod Serling said, you know, that he tried to write... Uh, you know, he would ask himself of a given moment, is it the truth as I know it, or better yet, the truth as I feel it? So I think, uh, for one thing, it'll make a better life if you state your mind, stand your ground. I, I don't mean stand your ground in terms of, you know, weapons, but I mean just be yourself. And you want to do that with compassion, you want to do that with consideration. Uh, that make, That's the difference between being a jerk and being a, you know, a good human being, is uh, a realization that despite the feeling we all have that we're the only real people in the universe. There actually are others. And uh, But I just want to kind of comment on Joan Rivers at this point because I really liked her. And I mean, even with her, her plastic surgery, it was kind of appalling, but it, at least it was a statement of who she wanted to be and what she wanted to do. And, uh, you know, it was her face for the world to see. So so this is just an interesting rumination. And it, uh, the fact that it does dovetail into science fiction, be it Yoda, Darth Vader, Dr. McCoy, you know, Rocket Raccoon, any of these characters, any of these people, because they feel like people. They, they, you know, the one difference between this century and, and the 20th century as well, and previous centuries is a lot of the people that we feel are our friends are people we've never met, and in some cases people who don't exist. And, uh, you know, you had novels previously where people felt very real, you know, the, uh, you know with, with Charles Dickens there's a famous story about, you know, people on the docks in America waiting for the old curiosity shop, the next installment to come, and they were calling out his little Nell dead, and when they heard yes, uh, they broke into tears, which led Oscar Wilde to comment that, uh, that it takes a man with a heart of stone to not hear of the, little, the death of little Nell and laugh. So, <laughs> so anyway, so this is just kind of a rumination for now, and uh, we'll talk again real soon, and so for now, it's Mark Zickery, Mr. Sci-Fi. If you'd like to comment about Joan Rivers or some of your favorite outspoken science fiction characters, please do, and uh, spread the word, subscribe, comment, uh, just, you know, all the things that we've been asking you to do. And this is, again, Mark Zickery, Mr. Sci-Fi, Mark, Mark Zickery of Space Command, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye.